So I've seen a bunch of videos out there that claim to share the best sequence settings for Premiere Pro, but the truth is the best sequence settings to use are actually dependent on the camera settings you used when filming in combination with your desired output and not a bunch of predetermined settings. When we talk about sequence settings, we're typically talking about two things. The first being the size or aspect ratio of your video. So like 1920 by 1080 for HD video, 3840 by 2160 for 4K UHD video, or even specialized social media aspect ratios like 1080 by 1080 square HD video for Instagram. The second thing is frame rate or how many frames your camera was set to capture per second. The most common are 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, or 60 frames per second. All right, now that I'm done blabbing about that, let me show you how easy it is to make a new sequence. All you have to do is go over to one of your clips, click on it, drag it over, and drop it in over here, and boom, you have a new sequence. Another way to do it is to click on a clip and then right click and go up to new sequence from clip, and you'll have another new sequence. If you notice up here, this was snow one, which was this sequence, the first one that I made, and then snow two is right here. So as you add new sequences, they will appear up at the top here in these tabs. And when you do create a new sequence by dragging a clip in, it'll be named the same as that clip. So this right here, these little like bars here, this is how you identify that it's a sequence. And then this like purple, like kind of film strip thing here and this green audio thing, that's how you can identify video. So the purple is video, the green is audio. So I have a sequence here and a video clip and another video clip and the sequence up here. So the thing that I would suggest though is to name your sequences right away. When you drag them in, it'll name the same as the clip and then just click on it. And I'm gonna name this one sequence one and I'm gonna go to this one, click on it and go sequence two. And then you can see over here that they also change. Just be aware that when you make a sequence this way, your new sequence is gonna have the exact same frame rate as the clip you dragged in. And if we slide over here, it's also gonna have the same aspect ratio or size as the clip you dragged in. So Snow One was 4K UHD here, 3840 by 2160, and the sequence will be the exact same. Now, if all your footage has the same size, so it's all 4K UHD, and it has the same frame rate, so these ones are all 30 frames per second, so one, two, and three here, then it doesn't matter which clip you drag in. But if we go over to this one right here, if you have a whole bunch of clips that have different frame rates, so this one's 19, 23.97, 59.94, if they're all mixed up, and these ones, remember, had 30 frames per second, then you have a decision to make before you drag anything in to create your new sequence. The most common approach is to look through your footage and select a clip with settings from your footage that you have the most of. So in this case, I have a few that are 30 frames per second. Well, not these sequences. So this clip, this clip, and this clip. I have a few that are 23.976. I only have one that's 59.94. So for me, if I have the choice between this and I have a few that are 30 and a few that are 24, I personally am gonna select one of the clips that has the lower frame rate of the two that I'm picking from. So in this case, 23.976. So I'm gonna click on that one, right click, and new sequence from clip to make a new one over here. On a side note, something that you should be aware of is that you might click this X, even by accident, you might even know that you did it. So if you click this or click this and you think, oh my goodness, where did my sequences go? Like you have nothing here. You know you made a sequence, but now it's gone. Just know that they're over here, right? They're, they're still over here. So if you just double click it, it'll come back. So the real key is don't delete these ones over here. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to customize your sequence. So let's say you don't know what your sequence is or you want to customize it. Just make sure you're selected over here. So it's highlighted in blue like this around the timeline panel. And then just go up to sequence and go to sequence settings. And this window is gonna pop up. Up at the top here, you can see editing mode is custom because it's customized to this clip right here that we dragged in. There are other presets here, but don't worry about those because we wanted to match our clip. Underneath it is time base at 23.976. Again, you can change it, but don't because that's what matches the clip that we dragged in on purpose because this is the sequence that we wanted. 
The big thing in here to take note of is under video and the frame size. So right now it's 3840 by 2160, so 4K UHD, and it's 16 by 9. The important thing here is that you can change this if you want. So if you now wanted to make this a uh, whoops, 1920 by 1080 sequence, you can change it there if you want. If you want to make it 1080 by 1080, so a square one-to-one -one aspect ratio for Instagram, let's say, you can do it there. Or if you want to make it vertical, you could go 1920 by, or 1080 by 1920 to make it a 9 by 16 vertical aspect ratio for something like TikTok. The only other thing to take note of here in this window is video previews down here. Just keep it at iframe only MPEG. Don't bother switching it to anything else. And don't even worry about what it kind of selects for these. They should just be lower than what you have here because they're just previews. So the higher you make these, so if you make them like 4K previews, it's just gonna make your computer work harder and that's no good. So once you have what you want in here, you click OK and you're gonna notice this thing pops up. And basically all this is saying is that any preview files that have been created, so if you've done any color grading or anything to your files and they have a preview that's been rendered, then when you click OK here, they're gonna be gone. So just make sure that if you're gonna change the aspect ratio up here to do it really early on in your project like this, because I haven't done any editing, so that you don't have to worry about losing anything. So just click OK. And obviously you can see now my sequence has been customized to be a vertical clip instead of horizontal. So now it's 1080 by 1920 here. And if you do this, you're probably gonna have to click on your clip and you're gonna have to adjust position and scale over here. So move this around, you know, move this, scale it up, scale it down to kind of position it to the new frame that you have. And then you'd obviously have to do the exact same thing with every other clip you drag into that sequence. So I'm gonna pull in this Samantha mask one on here. And as I drop that one in, you can see that it's gonna be a different aspect ratio here. So I'm gonna have to click on it and you know scale it up and move it over into place so it fits in the frame. On a side note, if you are gonna to flip to a vertical aspect ratio like this, then it works much better if you're working with 4K footage or if you film vertical in the first place. All right, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about setting up and customizing a sequence in Adobe Premiere Pro. But if you wanna learn more about how to deal with mismatch clips, which are basically the clips that you wanna drag in that have settings that don't match with the sequence, then make sure to check out the next video in my Getting Started with Premiere Pro video series. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.